The last time we saw Damon, he was slathered in blood. This is his first time back at the Red Keep since being banished from the pilot. It's a big moment. I think it's meant to be very fraught, and everybody should be wondering what actually is he going to do. Add it to the chair. We thought he should come back seemingly a changed man and then turn out to be exactly the same as he was before and continue with his unpredictable nature. When he comes back, he's not looking for his brother anymore. He's somehow looking to get back at his brother. And Rhaenyra becomes the apple of his eye. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you, Princess. Since the first time they met, we've known there is a chemistry between them, but now is an opportunity for us to really get into that. There was a lot of conversation about Rhaenyra not being innocent, and at the same time, she is not the perpetrator of this. The idea that this is actually abuse felt really important to explore, but we put aside that Damon is her uncle because that is the Targaryen custom. Directing scenes like that can be really difficult. It's a big responsibility, and it's important to shoot it from the right point of view. Being a female director, I've grown up watching how male directors have directed sex scenes. And as a woman, I have to really think about how to shoot it, because my go-to images are ones that I grew up with, which aren't necessarily from a woman's point of view. Now we're at a point where we're like, no, what is the woman's point of view here? And it was really important for it to be a scene where people were equally enjoying themselves and freeing themselves from the constraints of the world that they've been living in. The brothel days were really funny. I never thought I would say that sentence out loud, but here we are. The brothel days were really funny because you kind of just like get used to everyone being naked and doing it in tempo, like the whole room. It's the idea that Damon is using Rhaenyra as a way to get at her father. Ultimately, his impotence in this scene is a reflection of the fact that he knows deep down what he's doing isn't right. He thinks it's shocking to her, but she doesn't just get shocked, she gets excited by it. And when that happens, he has nothing. And he basically can't handle not being in charge or in control. I think what it's saying there is that young women want sex as much as young men. This often happens in Damon's life. The people closest to him get lured in and think that, oh, maybe he's changed, maybe he's a new person. Then he just proves again and again that he's still Damon. He awakens something in her, which is her perception of sex as a pleasure. She comes home, and Chris and Cole seems to be the nearest person available. It's very much against his oath. He's sworn an oath of chastity to put on the white cloak, but he's also carried a torch for her, and that's it, and everything changes from that point forward for Rhaenyra. Otto tells tale of Rhaenyra's doings in the city. In his mind, this amazing thing has dropped into his lap that he can use to ruin her and ensure that Aegon will be not only named heir, but also ascend the throne. A messenger brings word from the White Worm. I think Otto wishes that anybody else were tasked with delivering the news than him, because he really does love Viserys and loves the king and knows that it's going to destroy him to tell him that. This information is going to have repercussions on everybody. It's not just going to affect Damon, his rival, but it's going to affect him too. You so sick with ambition that you would have my daughter stalked, spied upon. The king is so incensed to hear the news and is so in denial about what's happening that Otto gets the blame. He knows that his hand has been corrupted. Rhaenyra did some things that maybe she shouldn't have done, but there had to be somebody following her around in order to see them and be able to report them. And she accurately calculates that that had to be Otto or an agent of Otto, because he's the one that most stands to gain. And it's Rhaenyra throwing it in his face that forces him to stare it in the eye. And then he does the right thing as king and lets Otto go and just says, I can no longer trust your judgment. The crown and the realm, both owe you a debt that can never be repaid. When it's put to Viserys that Damon may have had sex with Rhaenyra, I think that's where the, the dragon comes out in uh, Viserys. He once again banishes his brother, but what he feels more than anything is manipulated. It's not my daughter you lust for, is it? It's my throne. When Otto comes to speak to Viserys and Alicent is in the background and they don't know that she's there, hearing her father come and tell tales on Rhaenyra leaves her a little bit broken, but she doesn't know whether to believe him or not. 
She's really disappointed in her father for that. What happened last night? My father has made some worrying allegations about you. Were you with your uncle? Technically, she doesn't lie. She's just not lying. She didn't sleep with Damon. She actually didn't sleep with Damon. He couldn't do it. It's not Rhaenyra's fault that she feels the need to rebel. It's not Alison's fault that she married her dad and has ruined this friendship unintentionally. Alison is feeling completely stuck and she doesn't have any friends. She feels isolated and alone. You will wed Selena Valarian, and you will do so without protest. This has been looming over Viserys probably since he turned down Lena back in episode two. It's political. It's to gain back the sea snake. Um, it's also my cousin. It's Game of Thrones, though, but still, it's that. Yeah, so, yeah. After being a very patient father for a very long time, two episodes worth, about six years in the interim, Viserys finally decides that it's no longer an ask, it's a demand as her king. She needs to get married because they need to protect the realm. The realm is seen as vulnerable when it has no heirs. And he says, as your king and father, I'm ordering you to make this marital pact with Lane or Valerian. Both Alice and Rhaenyra become political operators, and a lot of that is the outside circumstances that they find themselves faced with. They're learning the quote-unquote Game of Thrones. 